If you're into AI, writing, or coding, you're gonna wanna stick around because this is big. OpenAI has launched a brand new feature called Canvas, and it's not just a minor tweak. This is something that could genuinely change the way we collaborate with AI, especially for those of us working on more complex projects. I've gone through everything from demos to behind the scenes details, and I'm about to break it all down for you, so let's talk about it. All right, so if you've ever used ChatGPT to write an email or generate code, you've probably noticed it's pretty good, but it still struggles with longer, more complicated projects, right? Well, OpenAI has been paying attention, and they've come up with Canvas, an entirely new interface that takes ChatGPT beyond just the basic chat window. With this new update, Canvas lets you work alongside the AI in a side-by-side -side window. Instead of typing commands into a chat and waiting for a response, you get a dedicated workspace where both you and ChatGPT can fine-tune ideas together. You can directly generate text or code in Canvas, highlight sections for the AI to focus on, and then get suggestions, edits, or even complete rewrites. Okay, so here's how it works. Right now, Canvas is rolling out in beta for ChatGPT Plus and Teams users. If you're on the Enterprise or EDU plans, you'll get access next week. Eventually, when it's out of beta, it'll be available to everyone, even on the free tier. But for now, you gotta have one of those paid plans to use it. So how do you use it? Well, you can either manually select GPT-40 with Canvas from ChatGPT's model picker, or, and this is cool, ChatGPT will detect when Canvas might be useful for a project and automatically open the window for you. For instance, if you're writing something lengthy or working on more complex coding tasks, Canvas automatically pops up. You can also just type Use Canvas in the chat if you want to open it manually. Now, for my writers out there, this thing is a game changer. During a demo, OpenAI's product manager, Daniel Levine, showed how you can use Canvas to generate emails, for example. So you prompt ChatGPT to write an email, and instead of just getting it in the normal chat format, it opens in the Canvas window. From there, you've got a, a bunch of cool tools at your fingertips. Let's say the email is too long. There's this little slider that lets you adjust the length, make it shorter or longer. But here's where it gets really fun. You can highlight any specific sentence and ask ChatGPT to make it sound friendlier or, I don't know, even add emojis to lighten the mood. You can also translate the whole thing into another language right there in the canvas. It's super flexible. One really cool shortcut for writers is something called the final polish option. This essentially checks the grammar, clarity, and consistency of your draft, so it's ready to send out or publish without you having to comb through every word. Think of it as your editor on standby. Want to add emojis? Sure, there's a shortcut for that too. You can just sprinkle them into your text if that's your thing. And if you're working on something more in-depth, like a blog post or a longer document, ChatGPT can suggest inline edits, point out potential improvements, and even rewrite the whole thing for you. You can toggle between different versions of your text, so if you don't like the changes, no worries. You can roll back to a previous version. Now, if you're a coder, this is where Canvas truly shines. I know a lot of us have been using ChatGPT for quick coding fixes or API generation, but it's not always ideal for larger projects. But with Canvas, OpenAI has added a bunch of features that make coding way more collaborative and easier to track. Here's what you can do. When you generate code, it shows up in the Canvas window, and you can immediately add comments with a simple button press. This is super useful for those of us who want inline documentation. Highlight a section of the code, and you can ask ChatGPT to explain what that block is doing or answer specific questions about it but it doesn't stop there. They've also added a review code button, which will look at the entire script and suggest specific edits. Let's say ChatGPT finds a bug or sees room for improvement. It will make those suggestions, and then you can either approve, tweak, or reject them. If you approve, ChatGPT will try to fix the code itself. You're not just getting help, you're actively working with the AI to improve your code. Other coding shortcuts include adding logs and comments, fixing bugs, and even porting your code to another language. You can translate code from Python to JavaScript, PHP, Java, C++, etc. This AI assistant goes beyond coding. It integrates seamlessly into your workflow, making every step more efficient. Now, this whole idea of Canvas is part of a bigger shift in the AI industry. 
ChatGPT and other AI models aren't just about giving you answers anymore. We're moving into an era where AI is becoming a genuine collaborator, helping you work through tasks in real time and even anticipating what you'll need before you ask for it. Think about it. AI chatbots are great, but they've always had limitations. They can't really manage large projects from a single prompt. You still have to go back and forth, tweak things, and sometimes even start over. Canvas solves a lot of that by making the process of refining your work seamless. Instead of reprompting, you're editing and iterating right there in the Canvas window. OpenAI is not the only one doing this. Anthropics Artifacts came out a few months ago and Google's Gemini is doing something similar. All these companies are racing to provide the best collaborative workspace for AI. And honestly, it's pretty exciting to see where this is heading. Now here's a fun fact for you. Some of the people behind Canvas are no longer at OpenAI. John Schulman, one of the co-founders, left in August and joined Anthropic, which is a direct competitor to OpenAI. Former CTO Mira Marathi and VP of Research Barrett Zof also stepped down just before the launch of Canvas. Despite that, OpenAI seems confident. At a press event, OpenAI's chief product officer, Kevin Weil, basically said that this isn't slowing them down. In fact, he thinks 2025 is going to be the year we see AI systems truly go mainstream, not just as tools, but as digital agents that can go out and perform tasks on their own. So what's next for OpenAI and Canvas? Well, this beta version is just the start. OpenAI plans to make Canvas even smarter, faster triggers for when you might need it, better accuracy in detecting what needs to be edited, and probably more advanced features. They've even hinted at improving the transparency of coding edits, so it's easier to track what changes the AI made. They've trained GPT-40, which is the engine behind Canvas, with synthetic data, which basically means that the model was trained on AI-generated data to make sure it knows when to trigger Canvas and how to make targeted edits. This was done with over 20 automated evaluations. And according to OpenAI, it significantly improves how well the model collaborates on both writing and coding. One of the biggest challenges, though, was teaching the AI when to make a small targeted edit and when to rewrite the whole thing. They've biased the model to rewrite only if necessary, especially when it comes to coding. This kind of fine tuning is key. Because, let's be real, no one wants an AI that over-edits or completely rewrites your work when a simple fix would have done the job. The competition between OpenAI, Anthropic, and Google is heating up, and we're going to see some wild innovations over the next year. If you're excited about what Canvas can do, make sure to try it out if you're on Plus or Teams. For everyone else, stay tuned, because this feature will roll out to all users once it's out of beta. All right, that's all I've got for today. Make sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't, and let me know in the comments. What do you think about Canvas? Are you going to try it out? Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.